I do have diabetes. Anybody else? <laughs> Fucking nobody here has diabetes. <laughs> Sorry, I thought this was happening in America. <laughs> it's not that bad to have, there's advantages, you know? Like, it's the best excuse on earth. You know, people are always like, why were you late? And I'm like, I was dizzy. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I tried to get it of jury duty, right? Because there's two ways you get it of jury duty. The first thing they ask you is if you're having a hardship. So I was like, boom, beaties, I'm out. <laughs> but I figured that wouldn't work because I don't look like I have it because I don't have the kind you get from cake. <laughs> so I was like, well, shit, an actual reason. But I couldn't think of anything. I'm a bad liar. You know? So the judge asked me, is there any reason you can't be on this jury? I don't know what the fuck came over me, but I just looked at him and I was just like, well, your honor, it has recently come to my attention that despite only having 5% of the world's population, the United States has 25% of the incarcerated inmates, many of whom are nonviolent drug offenders. And a disproportionate percentage of our population are African American and Latino males. But regardless of race, if you're in prison before you went in there, you were probably poor. So if you were to look at it from a distance, this courthouse doesn't feel like a place of justice. This is the beginning to a system that is an unintended yet extremely effective internment camp for undesirables. And I think that you and that everybody that works here should be fucking ashamed of yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I have a dentist appointment tomorrow. <laughs> One of the great parts of diabetes is that occasionally you get to have a cookie as medicine. <laughs> I never have a cookie though. Uh, I always have a Milky Way. One time I had to go to Ireland, right? Because what happened is my father passed away. So what I did is, what we did is we cremated him, right? And then we flew to Ireland and then went to a small town called Cashel and then we spread his ashes into a river. Uh, despite his express wishes. <laughs> He kept saying something like, I'm Greek, or something like that. <laughs> but anyway, we spread the ashes, right? Then I'm over there for a week, I have a little vacay. <laughs> over that time, I get diabetes dizzy. I go into a convenience store where there were no Milky Ways. Like, Fuck, no Milky Ways. And the woman behind the counter says, actually, we do have them. It's just over here, they're called Mars bars. <laughs> and it's true, in Europe, Milky Way, it's a Mars bar. Different things are called different things in different places. <laughs> like, do you guys know what we call Mountain Dew Code Red is actually called water in Flint, Michigan? <laughs> I actually kind of like having diabetes. Yeah? Like, I don't even know if there was a pill to take it, like, if I would take it to get rid of it, you know? It's like the only thing that ever made me give a fuck about myself, you know? Like, I used to drink all the time, but like now, just at night. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how this really goes, it's kind of Ted talky, but. But like, I got it later in life, I'm like, you think like the shit in life that's gonna suck, like not only does it like, build character, whatever, but, but it honestly ends up becoming a positive by the end, you know? Like, like, put it this way. Say this summer you go to Cape Cod, right? You go in the water for two seconds, out of nowhere, fucking great white shark just bites your legs off. You know? You're in the coma for two months. When you come to, do you want the doctor to tell you what happened right away? Or do you want her to kind of like spin it a little? She'd be like, oh, before I tell you what happened, let me ask you this. You ever been to Six Flags? <laughs> Don't you hate standing in line? <laughs> How would you like to have the best seat in a movie theater? <laughs> okay, one more. How would you like to finish the Boston Marathon before the Kenyans? <laughs> That part's new, it makes sense, right? Like, 
Every year, Kenyans win the Boston Marathon, uh, except for people in wheelchairs, uh, <laughs> who seem to make up a little speed on the hills. <laughs> I think you have to be in a wheelchair, right? Like, you can't just be like a guy. <laughs> like, I can't just show up next year like, I fucking, I want in. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be sweet if I won, and they're like, you won the wheelchair Boston Marathon. And I get up, and I'm like, fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this stage is not structurally sound. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we could have tied six books together. <laughs> it would have been far safer than what I just did. <laughs> it's cool you guys come out to the thing, you know? There's a lot of sadness happening. I need not bring it up. <laughs> Don't tell. <laughs> By the way, isn't filming a don't tell show a little antithetical to the business model? <laughs> <laughs> but there is sad shit, but there's even hope in the sadness, right? Like that Ukrainian President Zelensky, he's a cool guy. Yeah. You know, before he was the president, he was a comedian. That gives me hope. <laughs> <laughs> One day I may take power. <laughs> They get to have a cool president, though. They have a small country. We have a fucking huge country, so we're stuck with fucking cheese pizza. <laughs> like, you ever been to a high school lunch or, like, a big pizza party? Like, you're pretty much stuck with cheese or pepperoni. <laughs> That's what we've had for 250 years, just cheese, sprinkle a little pepperoni. <laughs> In 2008, we got a Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> Half the country went apeshit. <laughs> So much so that the next president ended up being some kind of pumpkin calzone. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck we got now, but it's certainly overcooked. <laughs> What's that? Expired. Expired. Yeah, I could have said that too. <laughs> Didn't really help. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> That's a good lesson for everybody. Positive heckle, every bit is disruptive. <laughs> It's kind of like going up to Anne Frank and being like, you're hiding very well. <laughs> All right. That's probably better than what I was going to say anyway. <laughs> I guess I'll leave. All right. Well, this has been a show. has been a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to steal books. And, uh, thank you for having me. Have a great night. <laughs>